So we've been milking at this one for four years now. The milking facilities at Kinnard Farms in Casco, Wisconsin were built for the long haul. And so probably 15 years ago, we sat down as a family and said, okay, hey, where's, you know, where's the future of this thing going? That conversation ended in an operation focused on comfortable cows. Now I like seeing quiet, laying down, cows going about their own business. And respecting the sustainable legacy his family started more than 70 years ago. I think long ago, our parents were really good at teaching us, this is not your land. You can have title to this land, it's not yours. You're simply the caretaker. Tending 13,000 acres of crops and a barn full of cows in the thumb of Wisconsin, surrounded by water, has plenty of challenges. Previous generations, half were fishermen, half were farmers. So we had a pretty early understanding that, hey, what we do on the land can indeed impact what happens on the water. Which is why their operation has been built from the ground up, with the environment in mind. They started no-tilling about 30 years ago. We did that, and we noticed probably by year number seven, year number eight, we were extensively soil testing at the time, which was pretty unheard of. We noticed that we could cut back on the number of inputs and still grow the same crop. But as tile was installed, they found water flowed less above ground along those traditional grassed waterways. What is the water quality coming out of that tile line? Um, did a lot of testing and a lot of research and uh, decided, hey, okay, it's, it's not always zero coming out of that tile line. What can we do about it? What they're currently trying is a tile line filter called a bark bedding bioreactor. There's very little coming uh, nitrogen coming in on the up end stream of this but there is next to none leaving the down end stream of this, so it's very effective. Pulling water samples every hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week over the past two years is changing the way they farm for the future. They no longer terminate living crops like alfalfa in the fall and leave it dead through the winter. And we found out that that nitrogen sitting there dead over the winter can be a very leaky crop. And it's actually changed our farming practices, which is, you know, the more important thing, what do you do about it? Today, that alfalfa keeps growing or a cover crop is planted instead until corn can be no-tilled in during spring planting. So if we can learn something by monitoring and figure out a way to keep those nutrients there, it's, you know, it's, it's a big step in the right direction. Learning is also why Kennard helped start Peninsula Pride Farms, a sustainability and water quality focused group of farmers. <laughs> learning from each other and experts like this recent field day about new ways to responsibly care for the land. The low disturbance manure applicator uh, applies the manure and the nutrients to the soil without uh, heavily disturbing the soil uh, profile. Neighbor and fellow dairyman, Tony Bry. We value water, uh, we live here, we drink the water, so it's, it's important to us for sure. We wanna to continue to improve our best management practices and, and research and, and have demos like this where we can learn new, new practices to implement on our farms. To, uh, to be better with the environment and improve water quality as well. Now, some 50 members strong, representing half of the area's cows and tillable acres, the learning is nonstop. Let's see what's working for this guy, what's not working for this guy, and I think more importantly, what's not working, because we all learn as much from the things that don't work as we do from the things that do. Back at the barn, a lot of learning went into this farm of the future, from ventilation to lighting controls to the system that separates, cleans, and recycles the bedding sand. We haven't purchased sand in about seven years. It goes round and round and round. A significant savings for both the environment and the bottom line. The farm is also recycling manure into a new partnership with DTE Energy. Soon, new digesters will be converting methane into compressed natural gas which will then be trucked out and put into a nearby pipeline rather than trying to create electricity on the farm and feed it into the grid. There's a lot less moving parts, which allows you to spend a little more, a lot more actually, on the upfront of the digesters themselves, really up the design, really make them efficient. Efficiency, whether it's the systems. So we're scraping up in the barns. The farms. The design on this is simple enough that I think it's going to be highly repeatable by other farmers. Or the cows. We look at this cow as this magnificent recycling machine. Ultimately, we're looking to feed the world, you know, using our cows as the tool. Kennard Farms is building on its conservation legacy. 
We didn't realize it was called sustainability. Working with the land, the water and the people from one generation to the next. Our goal as a family has been to always leave the land in a condition better than it was in which we found it.